Tech here, Superintendent of Falkir Schools, with another edition of One Hard Question. This week's hard question is a predictable one. Uh, has to do with weather. And it is submitted by Susie, and Susie asks the following. What steps do you go through to make the decision on whether to open, close, or delay schools when we are forecasted to have bad weather? And that comes from Susie. Thank you, Susie. Uh, first and foremost, for parents, anyone out there interested, we did develop this handy-dandy pamphlet um, over the summer, which uh, sort of goes through the process of um, uh, determining uh, the need for a closure or delay, and it talks about uh, the different types of delays, and addresses frequently asked questions. There's hard copies of this at each of our schools, and it's also av available online at www.fcps1.org. Uh, it's a good resource. But having said that, the process really begins um, the day or evening where weather the weather forecasted is includes um, snow, uh, ice, etc. And um, uh, today's a typical day, as was last night. Uh, for example, last yesterday evening, my son and I went and checked roads in uh, in our area. Um, we looked at the forecast, particularly from the National Weather Service. Uh, we looked at we look at what's coming. We try to make a decision if possible if it's if there's real definite issues. For example, if it had snowed or iced the day before, and we know we're going to be closed or delayed the following day for sure. We try to get that information out uh, the night before. Uh, but what's more typical is, uh, you know, they're calling for something for bad weather to come in around six or seven o'clock in the morning, which is um, Mother Nature's very evil way at getting it getting to school administrators but typically it's like around six or seven they'll forecast something coming in so we have a snow team that goes out around 3 30 I believe there's six of them that go out in parts of the county start checking roads uh, I start communication with um, uh, the assistant superintendent Janice Bourne uh, around typically around 4 30 in the morning sometimes earlier sometimes later depending on conditions and we'll sort of talk about um, what's happening currently what's forecasted what are the percentages um, what the snow team is finding if the phone, snow team for example is finding a lot of slick roads like they were this morning then it's a judgment call as to well, how many slick roads and are there, are there roads we can pull out of or is it too many roads that we potentially would have to pull out of um, so we, we have all those discussions. We also inf get information from VDOT. They share information with um, Cheryl Fisher um, slash Janice Bourne, our assistant superintendent, about road conditions and about perhaps impending weather I situations. I know at times there's been conversation with state police uh, that they have been included in that con excuse me in that conversation. Uh, but bottom line is there's a lot of conversations going on, a lot of discussion going on. Uh, and the decisions made. Typically, we try to get that decision made by five. We don't always make that. Sometimes it's later. Sometimes it's earlier. It really depends. But we try to make it as early as possible so that we're not inconveniencing parents who have you know unusual work schedules. Because so we have a lot of parents that work in the D.C. area, and they're doing a lot of traveling. So lots of uh, conversation, uh, review, reviewing of the forecasts. Um, the, the, you know, the easiest scenario, of course, is when you wake up, like I did yesterday, you know, you wake up, you look out the window at 4 o'clock, and there's three inches of snow on the ground, which is what the situation in Marshall was yesterday. Um, then it's relatively easy, plus it was, you know, 25 degrees. What's more common, of course, is what I mentioned is you got a forecast, you know, 70-80% chance of snow starting at 7 or 6. That was when it gets tricky. Uh, that's that can be problematic so what you do is you use the information you have you talk to VDOT you look at your forecast you use the two-hour delay if you think that'll be helpful uh, sometimes the two-hour delays aren't helpful sometimes it's better to go early um, go on time you know I've had bad weather hit around you know 9 10 o'clock and then it's cleared up by one or two as sometimes happens in late spring or excuse me early spring um, so that that too is part of the 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 you know, thought process there, but there's a lot that goes into it. I can just tell you, for me personally, you know, uh, when I think there's something going to happen this morning, I was up I was up at 3:30, um, you know, looking at things on the internet, um, uh, and that's the that's a typical day. And um, the folks that check roads, you know, who are actively checking roads, I typically will check roads in the evening before 
Um, not typical in the evening up because we have a snow team that does that. So um, there's a lot that goes into the, the, the decision making. And uh, one thing that we do here, which I think is unusual, we try to do it as early as we can. Um, some school divisions don't do that. We try to do it. We don't always do it early. Sometimes we do it right up to the last minute, the drop dead time. But um, when, when it's possible, we make that a decision as early as we can. So there you go. Uh, hopefully this is the last bad weather we'll get this year. Who knows? You never know. Wishful thinking. But um, hope this answers your question, Susie. If you have more questions along these lines, feel free to ask. Thanks. Have a good day.